just by looking at 27, 28, 29, we could argue that it's strong enough to potentially get its own second leg, right? Uh, there's also one more different phase off. Are you trending above the moving average or I you're see. trending below the moving average? This yeah, was sure. one bar, right? Okay. And it kept the market going sideways for about two and a half bars because most of it is above the moving average. Uh, we don't have that situation here. The market right. is firmly above the moving average. And look at the steepness of the moving average. This is important, all right? This is really important. Let me change this to something else. Here is another piece of research that went into becoming an indicator. I, I studied the effect of steepness of the moving average on expectations for follow-through as far as price action goes. And this is what I found. So if you look at all the parameters here, these are all parts of that the fractal adaptive moving average configuration up to, it also has a band feature, which is usually off right now. This is the part I added this year. This is still a test version, as you see, it's 10.2 X. The ones with X are experimental, but this is not the first version of it. This is like probably fourth or fifth iteration of the coding. But this came out of research that I did last year, actually. So if you measure the angle of this moving average, it, it is important. But how do you measure the angle? Because, well, you can say the angle is different now, right? I just squeezed the chart and this is much shallower than it used to be when it was looking like this. Don't forget that this line, the one that we see on this chart is not the actual moving average. These bars are not real. These are just a graphical representation of the energy in the market, of the behavior of the market. These are all man-made. What is happening is the actual trading, that is real because money is changing hands, there is people's psychology, there is their history and their future, all, you know, meshed up together to make decisions. That is real. But what we see here is not real. It's like the matrix, it's a simulation. It's not the reality. We are just having a method for looking at that reality, and that method is man-made. It is subject to all kinds of biases. One of the biases is this. I can squeeze this, and this becomes seemingly a less strong trend as far as momentum goes, or I can do this, and it looks a much more wild and high-energy trend. So the question is, how can you get to the reality of it without distorting things too much? So one way is to, to use mathematics. And the way that you can use it is by measuring the real slope of this moving average. And that is derived by the behavior of, of these bars. Because these bars are moving the price in one direction and the distances are not measured by the degree of a squeeze here or expansion. They are measured by ticks and points. Therefore, if you measure the slope of this moving average based on how price moved, then that is going to be correct. It's independent of how you set the chart. That's the point. And this is what's happening here. So if I turn this on, the algo will start to calculate the angle of this moving average. How it does it is what everybody has learned in high school. So it is a arc tangent of the slope. So let me just draw it for you. So here's a circle. Here's a line. Okay, so this line and this circle are touching at some point. So if you measure this point, then it gives you the angle of this line. So that's the trigonometry theory behind it. If I turn this to percent angle, I've forgotten what the correct values for these are, but we can experiment. Zero point. There was a fraction, I think. Let's use 15 and 0.2 for this. And then uh, what this does is communicates that angle to the trader, to you, by using colors. So bull trend color is currently uh, medium green. Strong bull trend color is light green. Bear trend is orange. And a strong bear trend is red. Uh, let's see what we get. Oh, and by the way, the moving average is going to bulge up. So the line width increases to two. I think those values are a little aggressive and maybe this should be four. I have to look up the, the results of that research. I don't remember the values, but this seems kind of correct. So essentially what this says is 
this slope is steep enough to consider it a trend. That's what it is trying to tell you. And this is steep enough to consider it a bear trend. And if you look closely, there are areas like here that the market is going sideways and the line is not bulged. So the simple moving average, the just one line on the chart can give you so much information. But most traders have it on their chart and they probably don't know what how to use it correctly. Uh, well, slope is one thing. The distance from bars to the moving average is another thing. So the gap here is important. The other thing is how much we went above the moving average when the market is crossing it. The things that I talked about bars, like this bar is four fifths of it is above the moving average. It's now bullish. I mean, look at your own understanding of a moving average. You have always had it on your charts, but have you been paying attention to these things? No. No. So do you think most other people are going to pay attention to it? Probably not. Which means if you just know how to use a moving average properly, 